Kia ora. Hello. This week we'll be looking at the life of the medieval urban poor and how they lived. If you did not see last week's episode, we looked at some of the ways you can build an impression as the urban poor. I wanted to make this video about who the poor were and what their lives were like. Much like the rest of the videos in this series, this is a topic that is highly complex, so I will give an overview and then supply my sources below for further research. In this video, I will discuss the medieval poor and who they were, their living situation, and the responses society had in supporting the poor. The demographics of poverty in medieval accounts are different than they are today. Social status was not dependent on wealth. We know that poverty struck merchants, nobles, clergy, and the worker alike. To be poor or impoverished did not strip one of their social status or title. For medieval people to be poor referred to a person's general condition, not only their wealth. The definition of poor was set by biblical terms, such as those with physical disabilities or those lacking protectors, such as women or orphans. The term could also refer to convicted criminals. Poverty was visible in medieval cities. The medieval city was a place that created its own poor. It was a place of mass immigration, bringing to its walls all the wealth of the land and those seeking to their share in it. Labourers, both the unskilled and skilled varieties, moved to the cities in search of work, usually with only their clothing on their back. The labour someone was able to find on arrival determined if they were able to pull themselves out of poverty. As discussed in our video on the medieval apprenticeship, to become an apprentice could guarantee wealth and higher pay. If someone was unable to secure an apprenticeship, they would be unable to enter the guild and left performing unskilled labour, which resulted in lower pay. Yet membership in a guild was not a guarantee to riches and success. A journeyman's wage was lower than that of the master. They were at risk of falling into poverty if they did not find continuous work. A journeyman would often move from job to job during the year in search of a constant wage. This would leave them in the category of the fiscal poor. The fiscal poor often paid the lowest of taxes to the city. In 1289, the poor of Siena were defined as having a tax assessment below two lira. On this basis, one-fifth of taxpayers were paupers. In 1302, the year of the Great Famine, this number jumped to 15,000, or one-third of the population who were assessed as tax poor. Most taxation in cities was based on the hearth. Records show that some heads of households who were tax-exempt on the grounds of poverty still owned or rented land or houses. In 1398, 55.2% of households in Toulouse had nothing. Yet placed in perspective, we can suppose that the records show that those people had little in the way of liquid monetary wealth, as they still owned or rented houses. Unlike in the modern era, where the impoverished tend to be separated into certain areas of the city, in a medieval city, the poor lived in pockets with the rich. Yet not all the poor were housed. Many were left to live on the streets, in alleys and taking up residences in church and graveyards, which had amnesty from persecution from vagrancy. So too were the edges of towns and cities peopled with the poor and homeless. Women were more at risk of poverty than their male counterparts, especially if they were unattached, forced to take on work in the lowest paid portions of the economy. As this was all that was available to them, prior to the Black Death, women were excluded from earning a wage in many industries. However, with the labour shortages caused by the Great Mortality, they were able to participate in more fields of work and draw a wage for them, yet these wages were still at a reduced rate than their male counterparts. Common jobs for women were those of servants, water carriers, and the notorious laundress, all of whose wages were not sufficient to support one person. This led women to turning to prostitution to supplement their incomes. With poverty being such a wide-ranging issue across all sections of society, medieval cities had to respond to poverty. If we are to believe modern media, the medieval world was selfish and cruel, especially to the poor and sick. This is contrary to the truth. Medieval people were very conscious about the plight of the poor. The medieval person was concerned about their own souls and sought redemption through acts of charity. This was not just medieval Christians, also Jewish and Muslims engaged in charity and provided alms to the poor. 
there were many ways in which the community and individuals would address poverty. In the cities, the church took on some of that burden of providing to the poor. So too did town authorities. One of the most common ways to provide for the poor was the provision of hospitals. The medieval hospital is much different to that of the modern one. Not all hospitals were places for the sick. They had a range of functions, lab houses, arms houses, accommodation for the homeless, hospices for pilgrims, and places that cared for the sick. These hospitals could be provisioned and supplied by the church or the town or both. We know that confraternities were formed to establish hospitals or could collect arms for the poor. Wealthy members of the community would strive to give their earnings as charity or leaving sums in their wills to the impoverished. Special attention was paid to the dowries of orphans and widows. For all their work in caring for the poor, medieval Europe still had a problem with poverty. In the countryside, this was due to the control of property being held in the hands of the few, agricultural work being paid for by wage labour, work only available for three to four months a year, leaving people unemployed for the rest of the year. Likewise, in the cities, as the merchant elites locked out entrance and rise into the guilds, self-employment was stifled for journeymen and instead was replaced with wage labour, which paid for one piece or day work. As the population of Europe grew, so too did poverty. As the population dropped during the Great Famines of the early 14th century and then the Black Death, the ruling elites used force to maintain control over the working classes and maintain the lower cost of labour, which maintained poverty. So why the dichotomy? On one hand, lock the poor out of land ownership and the guilds and still provide succour and charity. Medieval people were not uncaring for the poor. The poor were part of the community and subject to its laws. In Zagreb, in 1451, a beggar by the name of Matthias had a dispute with his son-in-law, Barnabas, who was wounded. Having confessed to the crime, Matthias was fined. Part of the fine was to be paid by the city and the other by himself. Matthias was to pay for Barnabas' medical expenses. Here we can see an example of leniency and care for the impoverished. Despite the actions of the church, state and independent charity, poverty continued to rise since the property owners benefited by having the poor working for them. The poor were a source of cheap labour. The property legislated against the mobility of the worker and the impoverished to keep the cost of labour down. The church, who also were one of the largest agricultural landowners, began to differentiate between the deserving poor and the undeserving poor, or those who they saw as disabled, sick and the like, and those who they determined were capable of work, yet were seen as lazy or indolent. This distinction influenced who could receive charity from the church. This again all contributed to the rising tensions in the late 14th century between the worker and the ruling elites leading to the so-called peasant revolts. Yet as the medieval period ended, the rising wealth of the middle classes did not remove poverty. If anything, it added to it. It was only through the exploitation of Europe's colonies and the rise of Europe's wealth during the early modern period that the living conditions of the poor increase. During this time, many of the impoverished left Europe seeking the new world. This, however, is a topic for another time. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. Means you must have enjoyed the video. So like, comment and subscribe. And remember, stay safe, have fun, and keep reenacting.